It is mid-1944 in the Pacific. The sun has set, and clouds hang low over the deep blue ocean, now shrouded in shadow. A G for M Betty flies quietly through the night, the crew on edge, but somewhat comforted by the cover of darkness. The U.S. Air Force's night fighters were older converted A-20 Havocs, not as fast as a Betty, and lacking sophisticated detection equipment to pick them up in such darkness. Suddenly, one of the gunners shouts, they see something. The Betty begins to shake horrendously, 50 caliber slugs ripping the poor bomber apart. Soon, it is sent into a spiraling, flaming demise over the Pacific. The U.S. Air Force had a new night fighter in town, purpose-built for tracking targets down in the dark, and bringing swift demise at the hands of radar-guided turret fire. It was the P-61 Black Widow, one of the most technologically advanced night fighters of the Second World War. The U.S. Air Force had wanted a night fighter for a long time, even before they entered the war. Jack Northrup was keenly aware of this and had been studying the British's development of night fighters to guide his designing of a prototype, one he would submit when the USAAF put out a bid. With the only other option being a converted A-26 invader, which was going through some teething issues at the time, Jack Northrup's design was chosen and given the designation P-61 Black Widow. With a twin-boom gondola arrangement not too dissimilar from the P-38 Lightning, based around two Pratt & Whitney twin MOSP engines and the SCR-720 radar set, the P-61 Black Widow was the U.S.'s first dedicated night fighter, purpose-built for the role. The weaponry consisted of four 20mm cannons in the belly, and a quad 50 caliber remote dorsal turret that could be operated either by the gunner who sat behind the pilot, or by the radar operator in the rear of the aircraft. Most intriguing, however, was not the aircraft's weapon or equipment, but its control surfaces. Although having a standard elevator and rudder setup, its aileron situation was vastly different due to the flaps taking up most of the trailing edge of the wings, a means done to ensure a low landing speed. Using a collection of spoilerons along each wing, as well as smaller ailerons at the tips of the trailing edge for tactile feel to the pilot, the P-61s had incredible roll performance at both speed regimes despite the size and weight of the aircraft, which many saw as too big and too heavy to be a true heavy fighter. Its first test flight in May of 1942, however, would silence those concerns. Due to the large elevator courtesy of the twin boom design and its innovative roll solution coupled with good aerodynamics, the P-61 was not the lumbering heavy fighter they expected it to be. In fact, in a mock dogfight against the P-38, the P-61 came out on top, never allowing the lighter and supposedly more nimble lightning to get a shot on the Black Widow. After developmental delays caused by high-altitude performance concerns, the introduction of the P-61 to service would be made official in 1944. When deployed to Europe, the generals of the Air Force stationed in Britain felt that the P-61 was too slow to be effective, and not competitive enough against the Mosquito the RAF was using. To settle the dispute, a bet was made to see which aircraft was better, with $500 riding against the Black Widow. Using a tweaked example to maximize performance, the Black Widow won handily, proving that its true potential was simply being held back by less than sufficient engines. It could outturn the Mosquito, outclimb it, and was faster at all altitudes. These findings would go into the creation of the P-61C, which would use stronger engines that were equipped with turbochargers that addressed the earlier high-altitude performance concern. Performance in Europe would generally be fair, shooting down many German twin-engine bombers and heavy fighters in the dark, though struggling against some faster aircraft such as the Messerschmitt 410 and the occasional Messerschmitt 262 they ran into. The Pacific, however, was a completely different story. With the vast dark blue world of the Pacific Ocean and many Japanese planes attempting to use the cover of night to fly back and forth, the Black Widow became a true terror of the skies for the Japanese, appearing without warning, striking without mercy, and leaving burning planes in its wake. This was when it could find anything, however, as often its patrols were uneventful, finding no planes to prey upon more th often than not. As the Japanese did not have any sophisticated radar technology like the Germans, they had little to counter the P-61, and it would in fact be technical and mechanical issues that became its greatest foe in the theater, rather than any gun or fighter of the Japanese Army Air Force. With the end of the war, the P-61 would be transitioned to the Air National Guard and used in many war games to practice for a possibly hostile USSR in the growing Cold War. It would be the P-61 that revealed a critical weakness in the U.S.'s nighttime air defense shield when B-29 simulated an attack on Seattle, completing their mission without ever seeing a Black Widow, as the aircraft was unable to ever intercept the bomber wing. They would also find some use in scientific experiments, dropping scale models of aircraft in development. 
but they would soon be retired in 1954, with the vast majority sent to the scrapyard. Though a few were converted to the F-15 reporter photo recon aircraft, which would serve admirably during Korea, providing key info to the UN forces. Of the 706 P-61s built, only four exist on static display today, with none flying or under restoration to flying status. Despite its somewhat short service at the end of the war, it was an integral part of developing the U.S.'s Night Fighter Corps that would eventually lead to the development of aircraft like the F-89 Scorpion and F-94 Starfire, as well as the tactics needed for intercepting an aircraft with radar.